Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. It's September, which means it's salmon season. We have Kings and Cohos right now. They're working their way up all of our local rivers. One of the most popular flies we have every year in our bins and out on the water is the egg sucking leech. Now this is a variation we're gonna to tie today. It uses an ice dub head, which just has a little bit more life than that regular fluorescent chenille. Um, you can also tie it with pearl chenille, make it a little bit flashy, has some kind of cactus uh, attributes to it. But this is kind of a, a useful pattern because you can fish it in so many ways. You can put it on a chuck and duck rig, you can dead drift it under an indicator, you can strip it, you can swing it, you can catch tons of fish on them. So play with the colors a little bit, enough talking, let's hit the vise, it's time for another fly tying tutorial. Alright, let's jump right in. The hook we're going to use today is a 2461 from Daiichi. Now, full disclosure, this is not the hook you want for salmon. This is a great steelhead hook, it's a great trout hook, but it's not going to stand up to the needs of salmon anglers, which is why I'm going to put down in the description and the materials list some good hook alternatives for salmon, like the 9395, which is 3x heavy. That's what you want. It's a serious hook for serious fish. So. Look down in the description if you're tying for salmon. Otherwise, let's hop right in. I'm grabbing some Viva 6 Ot in black. We'll start about midway down the shank. I'm going to wrap to the point of the barb up to you. I'm going to grab some strong marabou and olive. Now, this is a good color for low clear water. I'm just going to grab, you know, basically whatever marabou I can find out of this bag. This doesn't have to be the real prime stuff. This is a utility fly. It's designed to throw into the wood. Uh, it will get chewed up, hopefully by fish. So I grabbed two separate plumes there and I'm measuring the shank length roughly. You can go a little bit longer if you want. I put three or four nice tight wraps. I'm gonna wrap back just a little bit. Now, here's a quick tip. If you ever have a material spin around the shank, especially something like marabou, lift the stems, put some locking wraps down on the shank, and then on top of that material. And you can keep doing this if you really need to up the shank. I see it a lot with foam, with other stuff like this that, you know, folks struggle and you don't want to see that. So, oops, don't cut your thread. And don't freak out if you do, it happens. Even to the best of us. Just cover that up real quick. All right, I'm gonna wrap right on back to the point where I'm gonna grab some Crystal Flash and Pearl. Crystal Flash is a great twisted flash material so it catches light really well. I'm gonna fold that over, I'm gonna add one to each side. go. Now I got some excess off the back. I'm just going to trim it maybe a little bit longer than the feathers themselves. All right, easy. Next, there's a lot of ways you can do this, but the way we're going to tie this fly specifically, we're actually going to dub up and then wrap a feather back. So we need to tie in our rib right now. We're going to grab some ultra wire and brassy. Copper is a great pairing for an olive fly. Now, Olive, as I mentioned, great for low clear water, but purples work really well. A standard black egg sucking leech is a great way to go. Now see, I just have this long piece of wire hanging off the back. If you have a material clip, clip it in there. Otherwise, it shouldn't get in the way too much. Our body today is gonna be ice dub in the peacock color. Brown also works well. You can do standard olive, and you can also use a dubbing loop here if you want, but we're going to do just a classic touch dub technique. 
I see a lot of new tires struggle with dubbing, especially synthetics like ice dub. And the first thing you need to do is use more tension. Most people are not twisting hard enough on their thread. This stuff's really durable. You're going to get a bunch of a bunch of uh, stragglers down on your mat or your desk, which is why it's nice to keep a vacuum handy. But the other thing that you got to watch out is too much material. I'll see folks try and dub this much at a time, and it's just not going to work. You got to really less is more, build up a noodle, and slowly work your way up the fly. I'm not building this real thick, I just want to cover up my marabou. And you notice I left a gap up front, and that's pretty important for that ice dub head that we're going to add on after we finish everything else. Just a little bit more. I like to have a slight taper in there if I can. I don't think the fish really care but I think it looks better. There we go. All right, time for the feather talk. My preferred material is probably these whiting bugger packs. They're awesome, they're really well tapered, but they're also notoriously difficult to get a hold of at times, which is why these Montana Fly Company barred saddles are a killer alternative. They come in tons of fun colors, they're easy to work with, and they're not too expensive. So I'm going to strip this down, get all the fluff out of the way. And on the side, I'm going to start wrapping first. I'm going to tear a little bit up the up the barb there, or the up the stem. I'm going to tie in the stem pointing forward. Here's another good time to lock a material in. You don't want this to come apart as you're working back. Hackle plier time, but before that I'm going to tie my thread off and use the rotary function here. All right, hackle pliers, pinch the stem up top, and you'll see that feather automatically orients the way I want because there's no hackle right at that starting point. I like to give this a full wrap up front before I start working my way back. That'll help prop up that ice dub. Alright. Now, I'm going to grab, I transferred my hackle plier to my left hand. Grab my wire here, trying to catch too much marabou. I'm actually going to secure the hackle with that real quick. Sometimes it really helps wet your fingers, preen that marabou back. Now I'm not going to do anything with my thread here, but it's real important to keep tension with this wire because I'm going to start using this rotary and just keep going right on back up the fly. Nifty. Now I can take my thread off the cradle, wrap on top of that wire, make sure it's nice and secure, bring the nozzle up to the hook, and use that helicopter motion and it will break itself off. Easy. Reach in the back Trim off the end of that feather. And you have a pretty good looking woolly bugger already. This could probably catch some fish. Um, so know that you can always follow this and just skip the egg sucking leech part if you want. All right, let's grab some ice dub. This is the shrimp pink. This is probably our favorite color for egg sucking leeches. Classic orange works well, red. Some of the pinks work well. You're going to need more than you think to make this head. And we're going to start tearing it apart, actually. That's really important. That's what gives it kind of that messy, bad hair day look. If you've never seen a bad hair day, 
a great steelhead fly and this is kind of the style of head they work in there all right I have a big clump I'm actually going to insert the clump into onto the eye now I want to make sure my thread is pretty much in the middle of that gap I left transfer it over to my left hand and loose wraps here one complete loose wrap two now I can add some tension with a third or a fourth crane this back this is a great time to use your thumbnails and you're going to expose that eye and you're going to hold this back with your left hand bring it up you're going to build a little thread head right there great nice and messy that's part of the deal grab your whip finish five or six turn whip finish you can do one or two if you like and add another one because these flies do get torn up <laughs> kind of just use the tension of the hook here and it kind of dances out you can also grab a velcro tool something like that or a comb if you want but the more you fish this, the messier it's going to look and the better it's going to fish. It's going to look like a leech that's a little greedy. It's stolen a gob of eggs. Um, but we love this fly. It's real simple. It's not usually something you find in the bins. So tie her up, fish it. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. If you haven't done so yet, think about subscribing if you like videos like these. And think about hitting the like button. That also helps other folks out there find our videos. We hope to see you all very soon in the shop or out on the water.